tens of thousands marched in Mexico City with one clear message, an end to the systematic violence against women in the country. The government doesn't protect us, not just this government, but past ones as well. So we have to protest. And if we have to burn everything down, then we will. Women's lives are on the line. The signs women are carrying in this march read phrases such as stop killing us or we want to make it home to our families tonight. And that speaks to the main concern of women here, and that is violence. An average of 10 women get killed in Mexico every day in gender-based crimes. Most of those femicides go unpunished. Mexico is poised to elect its first woman president this year. Demonstrators agreed the moment is historic, but warned against it being seen as a quick fix to the many issues affecting women in the country. Changing things for women goes much deeper. Maybe there could be some small changes, but a president won't change this situation. Femicides have doubled in the last decade, and the country is one of the most dangerous for women in the world. From a country about to choose its first woman president to one which recently elected a man with deeply conservative values, Argentina. Javier Milei has made no secret of his rejection of the feminist movement, and in the four months since he's been in power, has already closed the Ministry of Women, Gender and Diversity and promised to repeal a law legalizing abortion. And in Chile, home to the largest Palestinian community outside the Middle East, the march focused largely on the plight of women in Gaza. I think about how women in Palestine are suffering and how much they suffered for decades. Today I'm marching for the women in Palestine. Every year this march is held across Latin America and every year women make the same basic plea, stop killing us. Yet the femicides and impunity rates continue to soar. Julia Galliano, Al Jazeera, Mexico City.